All right, so in this video, we're gonna take a quick look at turning a two-dimensional logo into a 3D logo entirely inside Photoshop CS5 Extended using the new Repose feature. Now, here you can see I have the flat 2D, 2D version of our logo, and it looks really good, but let's just say we want to take it to that next step and apply it to 3D. Now, in the past, you would have had to go to another 3D application and generate the 3D model and then bring it back into Photoshop if you wanted, uh, but now we're able to do that, all that 3D work now inside of Photoshop. So. I'm going to go over to another file. I've got this same logo, but you can see I've got it in a wireframe vector art mode here. And you can see it's all the different uh, wireframes that make up, or all the vector lines that make up this entire logo. All in one path here, but what you want to do when you're going to convert it to 3D is separate each of the elements of the logo into a separate layer or a separate path layer because we're going to create an, uh, an individual 3D object for each path here that's represented on each layer. So, Kind of got a head start here on a couple of the background elements that I've already created 3D objects of. So we're going to continue on with other elements of the logo. And the first thing is we're going to do is this word Blamo, the actual name of the product, which is on its own uh, path layer here. And there's the path. That text is, of course, yellow, as you remember, in the original logo. Now, we've got an entire layer filled with the color we're going to be using here. And let's go ahead and drag and select the entire path and with the path selected and we're hi highlighted on that yellow filled layer, we're gonna go to 3D and go to Repousse and choose Selected Path. And it's gonna go ahead and apply the 3D effect on that, giving it a default extrusion and then it's gonna go ahead and open up the Repousse panel. And you can see there it is. Now, immediately the depth of the 3D text, if, if I rotate it here, you can see the depth of the de text is a little bit deeper than I want it to be. So we'll go into the Repousse panel here into the extrude section and highlight the depth and we're gonna change that to 0.2. And you can see it makes it much more shallow. You can even go a little smaller than that. We can go ahead and make it 0.1 and gives it a little bit more depth there. Actually, let's go back to 0.2. We can always change this after the fact, but so we've got the depth set. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the home position here to bring it back to the front face. Now notice some of the areas of the letters aren't um, knocking out, like the middle of the O here and then the B and then the A. There should be elements that are knocked out showing through the holes. Well to do that, go over here into the Repose panel and I'm just gonna go over here and grab in the internal constraints just any one of the tools here. And if you grab the tool and hover over those holes, you can see there they are, they do exist but we just have it, they're just not currently active to knock out that inside area of the 3D shape. So I'm just gonna click on one and select it, and then go in the type menu here and choose hole, and it will go ahead and knock out that area of that shape straight through so we can see entirely through there, there it is. So we'll go ahead and do that to the remaining letters. I'm gonna do that to the A there. I'm just going in and just clicking on the shape and selecting it, and going and changing the type to hole so it knocks out that area of the 3D shape. So we'll just have one more shape to go here real quick. And there we are looking pretty good. Now, before I click OK here on this, I am gonna go ahead and change the beveling of my text. You can see I've got uh, just a hard edge on here, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a bevel. Let's go ahead and do a, a, a one on the height and one for the width. That gives me a little bit of beveling edge on that text there. If I turn it and rotate it here, you can see a little bit of a beveled edge there. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm going back to the home position. You wanna make sure you click it back on the home position before you click OK because wherever it is positioned when you click OK is gonna assume the home position. So we've got it setting front, the beveling, we've got the extrusion set right, so we'll go ahead and click OK. And there it is. Now to make the sides, you'll notice the sides of my text here are a default gray color. It didn't pick up the yellow, uh, which applied to the front face of the text. But to get, uh, take care of that, we can simply just go ahead into the layers panel and where it says layer one extrusion material right here that's attached to the 3D layer. We'll just double click on that and open that uh, document. And we'll just go ahead and sample that yellow color and fill this document with that entire color, or fill the entire document with that color. Close it, save the changes, and there the sides are updated. So let's move on to the next 3D object, which is this red object, which is the outline of the text. You remember there was that outline 
on the original layer. There it is right there. So there's this red area that surrounds the text. So we're gonna go ahead and make that out of this shape with this uh, red filled layer. Once again, select the, select the path, go to 3D, Repousse, selected path. And again, like before, it's gonna apply that extrusion just like it did on the text earlier. Now notice there are no constraints in the inside of this text here, so we don't need to apply any. What we do need to fix is the depth. Again, that depth is a little bit more than we need it to be, so let's go ahead and set this to 0.2 makes it a little bit more shallow in that sense there. So let's go ahead and click it back in the home position. It's all we need to do here. We're not gonna do any beveling on this particular graphic. So we'll, that's all done, so we'll click okay. And once again, here with the side walls, they're uh, gray again, assuming the sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and sample that red color and go, again in the layers panel, open up the extrusion texture layer, fill it with that red color, close it, save the changes, and there it is nicely updated. So now, um, and you remember this uh, background element, this is the other part of the logo. I've gone ahead and created this element using the same technique, using the same extrusion depth, and then I combined those two shapes together. If I just rotate this around, you can see that these two elements in there are kind of recessed inside of that shape there. There it is right there. So that's two separate 3D objects that were merged together and now what we're gonna do is go ahead and merge the rest of these text elements together that we just created. Here we've got this element with the red uh, outline of the text, and then of course the text itself. So still separate 3D objects, so we need to merge them together. Now you can only merge two 3D layers at a time. So remember not to select multiple 3D layers and then go ahead and choose merge because it will not work. Now merging 3D layers is a little bit different, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the red outline layer and the layer below. Just hold down shift key to select both layers. Then go to 3D. Now you're not gonna go to the layer merging layers like you normally would. You're rather gonna go under the 3D menu and merge 3D layers. And the reason why it's different is that it, yes, it's merging it into a single 3D layer, but it's still keeping those two um, 3D objects separate. So you can edit them individually while they're still in the one 3D layer, so there it is right there. So if I turn this layer off, you can see there it is merged together. Now if I go and use my mesh tool here, in the 3D panel, we're gonna use the 3D mesh slide tool, which is different than the regular object tool here in the toolbar. It's gonna allow me to slide that object forward just a little bit, but leave everything else in place, there it is. So that's looking pretty good. So let's do one more thing and go ahead and merge the rest of the text with the rest of this 3D object. So again, select both layers, go to 3D, merge 3D layers. And it's gonna go ahead and merge those elements together. Bear in mind to remember that you can only merge those two 3D layers at a time when you're going about merging multiple objects together. So it's gonna go ahead and merge that, there it is. now. The yellow text seems to have dropped behind here and is hiding, so we'll go ahead and look for that. Inside the 3D panel, we use the mesh panel here. And I believe it is layer one right there, so let's go ahead and take this. There it is, I'm just gonna drag and slide it forward. So if you click and drag down, it slides the object forward and gives us the appearance of the text kind of protruding out of the logo right there. So if I rotate this around, you can see that there's those elements combined together and all the elements are in place. And then just beyond that, all we have to do is I've got a more finished version of the logo here that you probably saw in the magazine. And you'll notice it's got some reflected elements in here um, on the surface properties here. It's reflecting the text in the red area like that. That's merely a matter of using the 3D panel and going into the material section, which is this third icon over, and you've got all the different mesh materials here for that text. Now in this case, let's see the layer one is going to be that front text. Yeah, there it is. So it's gonna try and do another render there. So layer one is that um, yellow text. So here in the material section, if we go down to where all the layer one surfaces are, there they are. Layer one front inflation, bevel, extrusion, all these different properties. And if we go into select on one, 
Notice we've got the front bevel. We've got a reflection property of 60. It's showing that little bit of edge with a file attached to it. Different things going on. It's just a matter of, of selecting each individual one and applying a reflection property. Here on the layer two, which is the red outline object, if I go to the front inflation here, you can see it's the, you got the reflection property set to 25, and that's what's showing the yellow text reflected in there is by applying that reflection pro uh, property in there as well. So once you've got all your 3D objects combined into a single layer, you can then go in and modify your individual surface properties to set up reflections and by applying files. And just to show you real quick how to do that, I wanted to show you that kind of uh, in context there, but I just want to show you real quick how you go about setting up a reflection in this case. Let's say I want to have that yellow text here reflecting in the red. Well, I know that the red layer is layer two. And you can just turn this off and on real fast just to see real quick, there it is. So with that being layer two, I can go to my material section, go to layer two, front inflation, right there, with that um, layer highlighted, I'm gonna set the reflection property to 30. There we go. Set that to 30. Now we don't see an immediate change and that's because you have to render this effect when it is applied. So to see that, you can go back to the scene section of the, the 3D panel, go up here and choose in the quality menu, ray trace draft. And it's going to do a progressive render of that area. And you'll notice in the area of the red text, the front, front face of that red text, it is reflecting that yellow text and that is based on that reflection property. So that's what I did for each individual surface that I wanted to have reflecting is to select it in the 3D panel and then apply the amount of reflection I want and then it reflects it when you do the render just like you see here. So you can see really easy to generate a 3D logo in, entirely inside Photoshop CS5 Extended using the new Repose feature because it has the extrusion properties and lathing properties you would expect in a 3D application as well as being able to apply surface materials to get a much real, more realistic final product.